Boomer boots. A boomer is what we call a male kangaroo in Australia. Six white boomers, no white boomers. I was trying to think of a famous kangaroo to reference in this video, but we have many of them back home down under, uh, but here in the United States, I don't think there are any famous kangaroos here. Oh, kangaroo jack. Whatever. Today I'm looking at my first split toe boots and my first kangaroo leather boots and my only natural vegetable tanned leather boots. This is a big one. The Grant Stone Ottawa Boots. Boots that I, spoiler alert, like and liked so much, I got a photo shoot for them. How about that? Wasn't that punchy? Anyway, my name's Nick. Uh, I am an Australian living in New York. I don't usually start my videos that way, but when has being an Australian been more important? than when wearing kangaroo leather boots. God, these boots are gorgeous. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to make this video useful for you if you're just interested in this style from Grant Stone and not the leather. And hopefully, if you're interested in the leather and not the style as well. The brand is Grant Stone. I've talked about them nonstop on this channel before and have made largely the same points about the brand every time. But if you're new here, uh, first of all, I would just love it if you subscribed. It'd help me make more videos about men's boots and apparel that is built to last. That's kind of the slogan I'm going with right now. Uh, if you're new here also, I'll let you know that Grant Stone is one of the most important companies in the scene of Goodyear welted footwear today. The reason being that they have amazing designs made with the kind of construction and materials and craftsmanship that typically cost one or two or 300 bucks more than what Grant Stone charges. We're talking, in the instance of these boots, Italian vegetable tanned leather, leather laces from Kentucky, the linings from Milwaukee, vegetable tanned leather midsole and insole and welt. And the reason it costs under 400 bucks instead of five or six or 700 bucks like it would if it were made stateside is that it's made in China. The only Chinese material is the box you get these boots in. Everything else is the highest quality imported stuff you can get from anywhere if you want to make an amazing pair of boots, right? The exact kind of materials that much higher priced shoemakers use. The brand is owned and run by the American white Gilmore and it's not made in a sweatshop. Gilmore and his dad have a long relationship with the factory. There are people who have been there for 15 years. It's on the beautiful tropical island of Xiamen. I used to live in China. Xiamen is famously awesome, an awesome place to live. Uh, like none of the reasons people have for disliking Chinese made products apply. Unless your biggest priority is keeping as much of your dollar inside the US as possible, or if you want as little money as possible going to the Chinese government via tax and such. That's, that's fine, I'm keeping politics out of this. My job here is to talk about the product not the myriad tendrils of causality emanating from it. And to refocus ourselves on these boots a little, these are immaculate boots. And I've been wearing them a whole lot, as you can see. As I mentioned, this is my first split toe boot. People usually call it a Norwegian split toe. And you might be wondering why someone would wear this style. And the answer is that it's, it's a dressier boot than your standard cap toes or mock toes. You might be saying, well, isn't this a mock toe with another stitch down the middle? But not quite. It's much sleeker and lower profile and less boxy than a typical mock toe boot. And it hangs around the realm of brogues and loafers and balmorals and like nicer leather footwear. That is a probably best one with like a button down. Now that might grate you if you prefer casual wear, and I get it, but when you get a smart shirt and a pair of split toes, you feel like a million bucks. It's not, probably not for a suit, especially not with this leather, but the nice button down and the slim jeans or khakis or maybe slacks, in my opinion, really, really good touch. Now Grant Stone makes these Ottawa boots in a range of leathers, of course, like several Chrome XLs, which is probably the most beloved boot leather in America, plus a couple of suede. And I should really emphasize here that the kangaroo is a seasonal leather Grant Stone doesn't always offer. When I saw them, I jumped on them and then they sold out. But if you're watching this now, uh, in like the, the week since I uploaded this video, then they are back in stock. I'm waiting to post this until these are back in stock, but they won't be around forever. So if you like them, I suggest immediately immediately getting them because this is a really, really cool boot that is also really hard to buy, which makes for a kind of useless video unless you're watching it in a very specific time frame. But if you're in that time frame, check out these boots. Now, isn't kangaroo leather evil? You're probably asking. Uh, no, it is not. Not more evil than the leathers you're used to anyway, like, you know, cowhide. 
I encourage you to read this article in the Washington Post about the funny attitudes Americans and American lawmakers have about kangaroo leather and how it conflicts with the reality of the situation in Australia. But in short, kangaroos are not endangered. There are almost twice as many kangaroos as there are people in Australia. Sometimes there are more than twice as many. And there are so many of them that they're regularly culled to protect the population's welfare and biodiversity like deer in America and to keep from dying of starvation and thirst during the summers when they run out of food. One hunter said in that article of the leather, quote, the animals are going to be culled anyway, they might as well be culled humanely with a profit made by someone. To leave millions of kangaroos in the paddock to breed is a stupid way of going about it. End quote. I won't go too far into it. Uh, you can read the article in the description below if you're interested in learning more. You should, I think, as an Australian anyway, I find it interesting. But it's worth noting that there's even a dietary subculture in Australia called kangatarianism, people who only eat meat if it's kangaroo because they consider it the most ethical kind of meat you can eat. What about the leather though? I've always been curious about kangaroo leather and I've always been surprised I haven't seen much of it on Goodyear welted boots outside of the very occasional offering from like Viberg. And it's surprising in part because it's not really more expensive than regular leather. Like it's extremely common on soccer cleats and because it's just a super strong leather, it is thinner than cow leather, but it's supple and it's tough. The collagen fibers that make up kangaroo hide are fine, concentrated, highly uniform, and parallel to the surface of the skin, unlike cow skin's irregular bundled structure. Kangaroo hide also has a very low fat content and a thin grain layer without sweat glands and erector pili muscles, pili muscles, <laughs> which means it doesn't require the splitting and shaving that some other leathers require. Plus, elastin is evenly distributed throughout the skin, which means that it's uniformly stretchy, which also means that it's very forgiving out of the box and does not have a tough break-in at all. All of these factors give kangaroo leather a ton of tensile strength. It can stand being pulled apart. The suppleness and flexibility of kangaroo leather is actually why it's very common in whips. Like, I feel like the main reason it's not seen in boots is because people assume kangaroos are endangered or mistreated. But like they're not byproducts of the meat slaughter industry like cow hiders. The animals spend their lives outdoors in the bush, but uh, that is why kangaroo has the potential downside of usually having scars from the animal's life in the wild. That said, the clicking on these boots that I've got is really great. The leather is beautiful and uh, basically blemish free, for me anyway. This is vegetable tanned leather, which is a increasingly rare and laborious and old world method of making leather that usually makes it stiffer and harder to break in. But as I mentioned, the kangaroo's elasticity makes up for that. And these are comfy from the get-go. And while Grandstone has offered a few models in green kangaroo in the past, this is natural, meaning it's undyed. This is the color of the kangaroo's skin. And because of that, in some lighting, it almost looks like a super light pink color. I gave this a very, very light conditioning with Sophia Renovator before bringing these in, but I didn't darken it very much. Like this is, this is pretty much what you're gonna get. Comfort wise, again, there is no break-in with these, but this is where I wanna tell you how lovely Grant Stone's famous Leo Last is and how sturdy their construction is overall. This is a very solid, sturdy boot. It's not unusually heavy, but Grandstone's thick leather midsole and insole mean it feels very solid underfoot and it's the kind of boot where you can really feel the quality in every step that you take. For sizing, get your usual boot size, which is to say a half size down from your Brannock. This is true for all of Grandstone's boots that I've worn, including their Mokto brass boot, which is on a different last, and which I named the best Mokto in the market up there in that video. So in short, if you're an 11 in Red Wing and Wolverine and whatever, you're an 11 in these boots as I am, and they come in both D and E widths. The price is $370. I already gave you all the reasons why that's a great deal earlier. You can't find better components for a boot if you try. And uh, that's, that's a review, basically, pretty much. But uh, let's, let's wrap it up with some pros and cons. Pros of this leather, of this leather boot, that is. If you don't have a split toe boot, you deserve one. It's a great way to break up all the plain toe and mock toe and cap toe boots out there. And it's a really interesting balance of business and casual. That's perfect for date night, I've worn one many, or under slacks at the office. The quality of the components is superb, like unmatched leather midsole and insole and everything from America or Italy. At this price, it's unheard of. I don't need to say anything else about how dope the leather is, but aesthetically, I really love the natural leather with the dark leather laces. 
Most guys wear these with leather laces they sent you. If you don't love leather laces, which I actually don't, I, uh, I put them in for this video, but they also send you some nice flat wax cotton laces with the boots, which is a really nice touch. They also give you this pretty cool Grant Stone bottle opener shoehorn, which uh, I really love and use a lot, as well as like some nice big cloth bags here as well for the shoes. The downsides of this boot might be that it's not super versatile. Like I feel a little bit odd wearing this with a t-shirt and I don't really think this color leather works with like black and gray pants or outfits. You know, it's really best with a lot of blue or earth tones in my opinion. Some guys do, I've seen online wear this with t-shirts. I think so long as your, your trousers are pretty fitted, you can get away with it. But uh, it's, it's not for, for baggy clothing, I guess. You know what I mean? Uh, most split toes are considered smart casual or business casual. You might find that the luggy outsole as well is at odds with the split toes dressier look. I, I get that it might make it a little bit harder to go with slacks in the office, uh, but I think khakis and jeans, I think it's superb. It's a really, really cool balance. Also with regard to scarring, I think I might've just gotten a really good pair here. I don't really have any scars besides a little bit of modeling on this side, but uh, you're meant to expect scarring with this kind of leather. So you might get some. Uh, if you like kudu leather, you might not care because that's pretty normal. But if uniformity is your big thing with your leather, uh, it might be a gamble you're not willing to take with kangaroo leather, especially lighter colored kangaroo leather because yeah, some scars might be there. But most people think it looks cool. All right, that wraps it all up. My name is Nick, this is Stridewise. There's a website, stridewise.com, where I look at men's boots and apparel that's built to last. Check it out, subscribe if you just kind of wound up here cause yeah, we got a lot more nice boots and uh, high-end casual clothing and apparel and bags and stuff coming up on the channel. Let me know what you think of these below and I hope for your sake these are still available by the time you watch this video.